in our syllabus, we can solve two kinds of differential equations independently. The first kind will be a first order simple differential equation, which will look as a format that is something like this. Okay, first order, and for the other side, it is going to be in terms of just x. And just like how we have solved this in our secondary school, y will be just integration of fx dx. The second kind of differential equation that we can solve independently will be a first order, so dy dx, variable separable kind of differential equation. So the format must be like this, where the non-differential side will be a function of x multiplied by a function in terms of y. And once we have gotten a format that is like this, the process to solve it will be to bring y over to the other side, which is something that is like this here, and leaving the function of x as an independent function on one side, integrating both the left and the right hand side with respect to x on the left hand side, we will be left with an integration that is going to be done with respect to y, and on the right hand side, it is going to be an integration that is going to be done with respect to x. So these are the two kinds of differential equations that we can solve independently. The reason why I keep stressing the word independently is because we do see this kind of question which require us to do a substitution. But I think we shouldn't be boxing ourselves up into a very strict format of substitution that is like this. It would be better for us to be looking at such question and to view it from the perspective like as a like for example, we are given a differential equation, let's say this one here that was given by CJC, and it doesn't fall into the category of the kind of differential equation that we can solve independently. So what the question attempt to do is to give us a help, is to give us a set of instruction where we are supposed to just simply follow the set of instruction to manipulate and change this differential equation into a format that the question believe once it's done properly and correctly, it will become either this kind or this kind, which we, that we can then use what we are taught in our syllabus to solve independently. I think this is a, way, a, a more versatile way of us trying to deal with this kind of question. Just in case, okay, just in case the question gives us a set of instruction that is a little bit different from the usual ones that we have practiced. So this CJC one is the more typical kind of questions which is of this nature. Let us take a look at one where there is a little bit of twist to the question, okay? And it came out in the year 2016 in A-level, where in this question, we are supposed to solve a second order differential equation. Let me write it down first. The second order differential equation is a uh, d square x dt square, then plus 2 dx dt. This is equal to 10. So this is a second order differential equation that we, we actually cannot solve it independently. Okay, but if you were to look at the question, the question gives you a help. The question gives us a set of instruction and we are just simply supposed to follow the instruction, believing that that instruction will help me to change this into a format that is, is supposed to be one that we can solve independently according to what we are taught in our syllabus. So what is the help that is given to us? The help that is given to us is here. By using a substitution, okay, substitution was the same as the, the usual one that we have practiced, but the format of the, the equation that we are supposed to be using for substitution, it is different. So now we are given that y is supposed to be equal to dx dt. Okay, we can see that this is different, right? In the usual one, we don't have differentiation in the substitution expression. Okay, it is just simply y in terms of x and another variable. But now we are looking at one, where the y is equal to dx dt, okay, according to what the question is mentioning here. That's okay, we are going to use this new set of information, this new instruction to just try to reformat this. So if I'm supposed to do a substitution, looking at this, we know that this dx dt is going to be replaced by y. Okay, and how about d square x dt square? If y is equal to dx dt, that means dy dt is going to be equal to d square x dt square. And this is a, a, is a very, very simple thing, but this is how we are going to be replacing this. And this will become a dy dt plus 2y is equal to 10. And according to what the question says, we are supposed to be able to rewrite this into dy dt is equal to 10 minus 2y. And this is what we are supposed to be showing. Simple thing, 
as long as we are open to be able to react to the instruction that is given to us, instead of like what I was saying just now, right, we box ourselves up to, to follow a certain format in terms of the substitution expression. But we are trying to not, not box ourselves up into that format. We are trying to be versatile and dynamic enough to receive us, even if the instruction is different from usual. But we are just receiving an instruction. So let's continue solving this. What is this? I would say this is a first order variable separable kind of differential equation because we can definitely look at this as if it is a dy dt is equal to let's say 1 time of 10 minus 2y. So here we have a function in terms of t which happened to be a constant 1 and here we have a function in terms of x. So it's a variable separable format. The help that is given to us by the question has changed a differential equation from one that we cannot solve independently into one that we can now solve using a process that we are taught in our syllabus. So I'm going to divide this across the other side, giving me a 1 over 10 minus 2y, then dy dt, this is going to be equal to 1. Integrating both the left and the right hand side with respect to t, on the left hand side, it is going to be integration of 1 over 10 minus 2y dy. And on the right hand side, it is just going to be integration of 1 with respect to t. On the left hand side, it is minus 1 over 2 ln 10 minus 2y. It's going to be equal to t plus an arbitrary constant. I'm going to choose a to be the arbitrary constant. Uh, let me try to express y in terms of t first. So multiplying negative 2 over, we have a ln 10 minus 2y is negative 2t minus 2a. So removing the ln, we have a modulus of 10 minus 2y is e to the power of this, which I can also rewrite it as this, e to the power of minus 2t, which means that 10 minus 2y is going to be equal to plus or minus e to the power of minus 2a, e to the power of minus 2t, which means that y here is equal to, y here will be equal to um, 5, then plus or minus, plus or minus half, e to the power of minus 2a, e to the power of minus 2t, which I am going to just re-express this entire thing into a single arbitrary constant, which will be giving us this, y is equal to 5 plus, so this, I'm going to just replace it by b, okay? So this will be b, e to the power of negative 2t, where b here represents the plus or minus 1 over 2e to the power of minus 2a. And I think um, with, this, with this, we can probably start to try to solve for the arbitrary constant. We are given by the question that when t is equal to 0, dx dt is equal to 0. And y is actually dx dt. Let me re-express this first. So dx dt here is equal to 5 plus b e to the power of minus 2t. And when, according to the question, when t is equal to 0, dx dt, this is equal to 0. So we have a 5 plus b e to the power of 0 is equal to 0. This tells me that b must be equal to minus 5. So we have now dx dt is equal to 5 minus 5 e to the power of minus 2t. And what do we have? We have a first order simple differential equation, okay, which we can also solve independently. So to solve this, x is just following the process equal to integration of 5 minus 5e to the power of minus 2t, which is going to be 5t, then minus 5. This will be e to the power of minus 2t over minus 2 plus um, the next arbitrary constant, since I've already used a and b, I'm going to go for c over here. So x is going to be a 5t plus 5 over 2 e to the power of minus 2t plus c. Let's do one final thing, which is to solve for c. So when t is equal to 0, okay, the question mentioned this to us, x is also going to be equal to 0. So when t is equal to 0, x is equal to 0, which means that we have a 0 plus 5 over 2 e to the power of 0 plus c is equal to 0. Okay, c here is equal to minus 5 over 2. So we have our answer now. x here is going to be equal to 5t plus 5 over 2e to the power of minus 2t. 
plus c, which is minus 5 over 2.